Hello everyone, welcome back to Touch the Fire Twice. I'm Joshua and I'm here today to do a Bath & Body Works Wipe Barn Candle Company candle haul and mini review-ish from the semi-annual sale June 2024. But first, if you're new to Touch the Fire Twice, welcome. My mission here is to share my love and passion for fine home fragrance as an enthusiast, an educator, a reviewer, to inspire you to increase your own fragrance knowledge and understanding, ultimately enhancing the scent memories that you create. If you wanna learn more about what I do, why I do it, and how I do it, you can check out my website at touchthefiretwice.com and please do give me a follow over on Instagram, also at touchthefiretwice. But for now, let's dig into this it's not a large haul, but it's a haul nonetheless. Six candles from the semi-annual sale. So what have we got here? There was one 75% off candle that I purchased. There were a couple from the Blends collection, one of the random releases, I'm not sure what the collection is even called, and then one of the spring release candles. So a bit of a, a mixture here of what I've got. So I guess I'll start with the 75% off candle. Now, very rarely do I end up purchasing the 75% off candles because I think last time, last summer, it was just at the store I went to a, a shelf full of winter candles, which I can get that every year. It's not that big deal. And I remember it was a version of winter that I think didn't burn particularly well. Uh, but they had, on the second day, mind you, this wasn't even the first day, and this is the largest store in my district, apparently. And they had probably 25 or 30 candles. Um, nothing super exciting, that weird, um, top Shelf Elf or Candy Emporium or something like that that just didn't smell good. And then maybe some Crushed Candy Cane or whatever that one's called in the White Barn packaging. Not a fan of that one. But then they had a fair number of Twisted Peppermints actually in this packaging. And then also sort of that nutcrackery little like theatrical proscenium label with the lighter pink wax. I don't remember which one of the Twisted Peppermints burned better last year because I think I had both and one of them didn't burn great. Can't remember. But Twisted Peppermint, you can't go wrong with this. I get it every year. I'm sure I have a handful of these in my collection unburned from over the years, but at 75% off, plus I had a 20% off coupon from a friend because I never receive coupons anymore from Bath & Body Works. So sidebar, before I finish talking about this, the coupons, I think some people assume, oh, it's a loyalty program. The more often you purchase, the more often you'll get coupons. No, in fact, the only loyalty is the fact that you build rewards when you spend money there and you get the $16.95 reward because coupons, they are really win back coupons where they're trying to bring you into the store. So if you're purchasing frequently, they have no need to give you 20% off or 25% off or great coupons because you're in the store anyway, so why are they going to try to bring you back in? So what I've noticed certainly, I've had family members who rarely would make a Bath & Butterworks purchase and they would be getting coupons for a free three wick candle and 25% off versus at the time I would get a coupon for heck, a free pocket back and maybe 20% off or something like that. However, in the past year and a half, I received no coupons in the mail whatsoever. And I haven't had any coupons in probably the past eight or 10 months load into my rewards account either, except when there's sort of the wide, everyone gets a random appreciation 10 off 30 coupon or something like that. But when it comes to like the mailers where there's a three to five week period where coupons are valid and it's usually a 20 or 25% off, never, I never get them anymore. And I don't purchase that much anymore either. So I'm not really sure why that is. I haven't done a mail order for a long time. And for a while I used to notice that I'd only get the coupons if I would do a mail order. So maybe I have to do that and that'll restart them and then they'll appear in the app and um, you know, paper coupons, don't really know why. And frankly, as someone who used to purchase frequently and now purchases less frequently, I would think that the algorithm that they're using for their marketing campaign and their win backs should like tag me, but it hasn't yet. So if it does, I will actually spend more there. If it doesn't, I won't. The only reason I bought these candles, as many as I did, the six or seven I purchased, was because a friend gave me their 20% off coupon that they weren't going to use that was expiring on that second or third day of the semi-annual sale. All that to say, the 75% off and the 20% coupon brought this down to $4.99. Really hard to pass up when it is a candle that I know I will use every year. Um, didn't need to stock up, trying to wean back the collection a bit, but I was like, okay, I don't get coupons often. Let me just grab that. So that was that. Then let's move into, we'll go from least exciting to most exciting, though frankly, none of these are exciting. There were times when they would bring back vault candles or they would have really special re-releases of you know, the Summer Boardwalk collection, the old Circa 2012 Slack & Co collection, or the Sweet Shop, Spring Street Sweet Shop collection from 2014 that came back. And they haven't done anything like that. And even the vaults have been kind of random or very recent vaults, not a true vault, like the front of the vault. There's one that's kind of exciting here that I'll get into that I will say, there's one of these that is actually, I believe, a re-release of 
an old candle that was originally a failed test scent came back, tested, and eventually went wide. But we're talking probably seven, eight years ago at this point. So we'll save that one for last. But getting into the next, a Paris Cafe. So at 1095, I recently saw on Queen of the Girl Geeks and via Tessa's blog, Life Inside the Page, both great resources for Bath & Butterworks News, of course, that freshly brewed coffee is coming back this fall. So I will grab one of those. But before I saw that, I did grab a second Paris Cafe because I used to not like this scent because I was a fan of the espresso bar from back in the day that was a very clean coffee scent. This has that heavy brioche, kind of that burnt smell to it, a bit overpowering, frankly, a little bit cloying, but on the right day with the right vibe in the morning, you know, working from home or just doing chores around the house in the first couple hours of the morning, it can be nice to start the day. And so I figured at $8.76 with that 20% off coupon, it was worth it because I will certainly burn it throughout the fall, most likely. Then we get into an old favorite that now comes out pretty much every year and I think is a go-to that probably will not go away. And that is the beloved Berry Waffle Cone or as Kent of the Candle Channel lovingly refers to it as the BWC. Can't get enough of it, right? So this is a very, very simplistic package. And I think the one last year I kind of liked better, but it's super cutesy. So it's not, you know, I don't really buy it for the cutesy factor, um, but I guess this is interesting, could be worse, label with that bright yellow wax, which I think we've never seen for Berry Waffle Cone. But this one, of course, we know is the Sweet Summer Berries Golden Waffle Cone and Creamy Vanilla. I don't necessarily get berries specifically. Waffle Cone, Creamy Vanilla, not so much. I've always said, and I think most folks agree, First of all, this is a powerhouse knock you down scent. This is the type of scent where it throws within five minutes of burning and you blow it out, you leave your house, you come back hours later, it is still in the air. This is summer boardwalk used to be like this. The original salty caramel from 2012 was like that where it just gets into the fabrics almost too much, but I'd rather have something that throws well than doesn't throw frankly. But this one is so sweet, borders on cloying, but for me it, it it just works. And I don't know if it is simply that it is not ooey gooey caramel frosting fudgy, which I don't like so much as far as cloying goes, but it's more of baked good, crumble, spicy, autumnal, nearly holiday kitchen spice sweetness that I lean to and really appreciate, sort of a cinnamon sweetness or a brown sugar sweetness, not so much the batter frosting caramel sweetness, which is I'm not as much of a fan of. And this one, it is just so fall and so autumnal. It is super warm. It is heavily spiced. I don't know any waffle cone that I've ever had never has never had spices in it. And this has probably nutmeg, maybe a little bit of allspice, a heavy dose of cinnamon, also heavy on the brown sugar. Like you've got crumbles of a streusel topping over, let's say almost like a Dutch apple pie or something like that. And that's really the primary note in this. I suppose there's a berry to it, but when you think of summer berries or, you know, a berries and cream scent or the, what is it, the, tr the triple berry trifle or something like that from Homeworks, a really, really great fragrance that has sort of like a whipped cream and a Grand Marnier aspect to it as well. You can smell the berries in there. This, I think anyone would be hard pressed to smell this blind and say, oh, I smell berries. You can kind of say, okay, there's a fruitiness to it, but it's like 10% fruit and 90% this streusel. So to me, it's more like, call this a berry cobbler in the fall, and no one would say, no, this is a summer scent, this is a waffle cone. It is really a spiced autumnal berry cobbler. Great, really strong, good old BWC. Then we're moving on to, let's go into the two blends. So there's a handful of blends. I, I again, hit or miss on the blends. There have been some that were interesting some years that I was excited to try. I haven't been a fan really of any, and I think the only one that I purchased multiples of, maybe the first or second blends collection had, what was it, the Cinnamon Sugar Donut and Paris Cafe, I think. Later came out as Cafe Italia, could be off on that. And for me, I'm not a big fan of a lot of the traditional perfumey body care signature fragrances that come out. And most of the blends this time around are based on those plus a home fragrance candle. So really not my wheelhouse, but I did grab two. The first one being Plumeria with sugared lemon zest. Notes on this one, pink Plumeria, night blooming jasmine, bright lemon zest, and fresh sugar cane. Plain lids on this blends collection. I'd say the label, it works. When it comes to sort of the rectangular label where we get the $24.95 price tag, it works. It's got a little bit of that sort of hand-drawn botanical aesthetic there, but with some gold leaf. I don't, frankly, I don't love it. I don't I'm completely neutral on it. I, I don't think it's hideous, but I don't say, ooh, I like that, that's nice. It's just there. It just is what it is, to be totally frank. So smelling this, I don't 
I actually don't love it. I don't dislike it. I would say compared to the Vanilla Bean and Ocean, which I didn't enjoy, compared to the Black Tree Merlot and whatever the body care item was, didn't care for that one. Even though it said it had, you know, luscious wine in it, it, it doesn't. Black Cherry Merlot, we all know, is a rich cherry scent. There's no wine to it whatsoever. And frankly, there's, why would there be Merlot wine with cherry? Like, you can get a sour cherry note in some wine, though there's not actual cherry juice in a traditional or actual authentic wine. But the Black Cherry Merlot is, it's dark cherry juice. <laughs> there's, there's no real alcohol to it. They did make a Black Cherry Merlot candle once in 2014 in that cork and vine collection that came out late summer into fall that black cherry merlot actually smelled like wine that was the first time they had black cherry merlot in a candle the only time they had whatever that fragrance was and then there's probably an uproar where people said this doesn't smell like my hand soap what is this i want my robitussin cough syrup cherry that i think black cherry merlot smells like and then ever since then 10 years later it has always just been the traditional cherry when it comes to the Black Tree Merlot. Getting away from that tangent, boy, this is, this is just for the folks who love Bath & Body Works. If you like any of my other reviews, but you don't like Bath & Body Works, this is not the video for you, clearly. But of course, most of my subscribers here are, are here for the BBW content. However, nose on this one, the Plumeria and Sugared Lemon Zest. I don't remember smelling their Plumeria candle on its own. I believe that was sort of an old school 1990s body care fragrance that was fairly straightforward, a very sweet floral. Again, you've got Plumeria, a little bit of the jasmine to give it some headiness, but really that Plumeria is very sweet, kind of that sweet pea sort of sweetness. And it is, in there it is nice, but a little bit of that sweet powderiness. Not so much of the jasmine, because there's no real muskiness to it, maybe a little bit of headiness. And then that sugared lemon zest comes through, really that straightforward lemon candle. It's that very sweet, crunchy, I almost say more like a lemon juice with sugar, like a lemonade, frankly. But a bit of a zestiness to it, that ping in the air. It might be over, overwhelmingly strong and sweet and almost cloying in a way, floral cloying when lit. So I might give this away. Frankly, maybe I'll exchange it. I don't know. If I light one of the other semi-annual sale candles and really like it, I may exchange this unlit, of course, for one of those because, again, I like this comparatively to some of the other blends that were in the collection. But if it were on its own, if I weren't reviewing it, if it wasn't whatever, 867 with the coupon, I would not have purchased this if I'm being honest with myself. That is, the marketing gets you sometimes, right? Then we go to one that I actually really liked and then I burned it and I don't know if I actually like this one either. And that is In the Stars with Honeycrisp Apple. Notes on this one, Starflower, Sandalwood Musk, Golden Honeycrisp, and Apple Blossom. Now a couple notes on those notes. Starflower, frankly, I'm not sure what that is. I haven't Googled, I should. I hate when viewers say, I don't know what that is. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm like, girl, you got Google in your hand, look it up. I didn't look this one up, so. That's my fault. Sandalwood musk. Uh, okay, so musk and sandalwood are two different things. So musk is, you know, originally it was from the musk deer, the glandular secretions of this very alluring, phenolic, animalic, gross, but amazing musky fragrance that just is, draws you to it in this very deep way. And then sandalwood is a warm, kind of creamy, light wood fragrance that is soft and, again, creamy and not as heavy or as balsamic as, say, like a cedar. So sandalwood musk, I believe there could be musk and sandalwood in here, but I don't believe sandalwood is a type of musk, frankly. And I did burn this once, had a pretty strong throw, good performance. I like it on cold. It certainly leans autumnal because of that apple that is in there. The apple blossom, you would think, would pull that a little more springtime because, you know, I think of orchard apple, I want to say from Homeworks, drenched apple flower from Bath & Body Works back in the day. Plenty of apple blossoms can be more of a spring fragrance, but the apple in here does lean more fall or autumnal. And I, I do kind of like it on cold, but when I lit it, it just smelled kind of like you're walking down a, a department store, like a mid-range, like a Macy's or something like that. And there's lots and lots of synthetic fragrances in the air that they're spritzing at you and you're smelling them and they kind of all just end up smelling the same because they're built similarly and they just you know mix together, they blend together. And that's kind of what I'm getting from this, is generic perfume more than anything else. You don't get apple a whole lot in personal fragrances, in, in fine fragrances, though certainly sometimes there'll be a, you know, a green apple in there or an apple skin or something kind of tannic in there. The apple I kind of liked, I thought, okay, it's just maybe a mature version of apple for the fall, but really, once I lit it, it was too, it was too strong and mm, cheap, I suppose. It's, it kind of smelled like a cheap perfume, yeah. That's, it smelled like cheap perfume to me. Now, 
when I was smelling this, it actually seemed similar to, so I'm, I paused for a second, I'm back now, but I wanted to look up Starflower and I thought that the candle here of In the Stars and Honeycrisp Apple smelled just a little bit like the Baccarat Rouge 540 that people go wild over, which I've had samples of and I just, it's not for me, I don't like it. It is too everything all at once. Everything everywhere all at once right in my face. And I was trying to see if there were any notes shared in this, like could this almost be an indirect dupe or something, not dupe like the dupe collection of fragrance uh, mists that Bath & Products released in the spring, but like an indirect dupe sort of, well, people will love this because it'll remind them up, right? Um, I don't really know exactly, but the notes in, in the stars are starflower, sandalwood musk, sugared tangelo, which is a citrus, white agarwood, and radiant amber. So the agarwood oud is gonna be deep, dark, really resinous. Amber is going to be rich, resinous, warm, honey-like, leathery. The starflower, they say, smells like honey as well. That makes sense. And of course, sandalwood is a creamy wood. Musk is alluring deep. Really kind of hits with, you know, you've got amber and musk and sandalwood and agarwood. It is, that is a heavy hitter. And then a bit of the lightness from, I guess, the, I guess, honey of starflower. That's really not light. That's, honey is also intense, even in, in a floral variation of honey. And the sugared tangelo, okay, well, some citrus in there. But the most simplistic version of the Baccarat Rouge notes are saffron, jasmine, amberwood, ambergris, fir resin, and cedar. Okay, so amber, some wood, the jasmine, maybe a bit interchangeable, but I don't think starflower, if it smells like honey, really smells like jasmine. So could have been my nose playing tricks on me, but it's of that family where there's a sweetness and there's so much honey-like, musky, creamy heaviness where... I, yeah, I just don't, I don't want to burn this again. I think I'm just in the mood for fall. And I was like, ooh, apple smells nice. <laughs> but this, this is not for me. If it's for you, great. I love it. Uh, for you. And then the final one here, which I'm actually, I guess, most excited about, surprisingly so, is toasted cinnamon sugar. Label is, they just really, I don't know. It's, I know it's kind of a, a neutral, simplistic collection, but it just seems very thrown together. There's no real thought behind it. I mean, this is just an Art Deco gold leaf design there has nothing to do with toasted cinnamon sugar okay there's a little you know some salon cinnamon sticks there whatever that's fine uh but it really this does not evoke the fragrance whatsoever and the notes warm cinnamon brown sugar crumble and sweet glaze what i will say here is the notes are accurate i think a lot of us probably thought oh it's toasted cinnamon sugar is this going to be either that saturday morning cereal candle that smelled like cinnamon toast crunch from a few years ago or is it going to be your cinnamon spice vanilla, AKA your cinnamon sugar donut from you know 2011 and throughout the years? It's not. When I first got my nose on it, I thought it had a little bit of that kind of, let's call it sour milk fragrance that I think comes in some beloved, though not by me, <laughs> Bath and Body Works fall bakery gourmands. When it comes to anything that has like uh, a graham cracker note to it or some of the pancakes or anything that has like a, frankly, a glaze or has a cream cheese frosting. Sometimes, sometimes there'll be this sort of like soured milk note that I get from it, which I thought I got in here. I was wearing a mask in the store when I was sniffing it, but now it really is just a glaze, though I think it could lean towards almost like a cream cheese glaze or like a milkiness. However, the big thing about this is, this is probably 80, 90% similar to two old test scents. One test scent, one that tested and I think went wide, at least during a semi-annual sale, and then hasn't really been seen. This smells quite light. I have to burn it to be sure, but I wanted to see what everyone thought on this. And I haven't watched any of the other reviews on these yet, uh, as far as other reviewers. I've been watching some, but I have not seen sort of the in-depth hauls on these. I haven't seen Ken's opinion on this yet, but I'm curious what he'll say about this. Because for me, this reminds me a lot of Sugar and Spice, which was released in 2012. It was the first big holiday collection post Slack & Co. This was a failed test scent. I loved it at the time. And the notes on it, you can actually see my review of that here if you wanna watch like some long old haul video from 12 years ago. The notes on it back then were cinnamon, nutmeg, allspice, and sugared maple combined to make a fragrance that captures everything that's nice about the holidays. And the label on there had these old sort of like shortbread style German cookies that had large, raw sugar crystal chunks on it. And that is really what that smelled like to me with a bit more spice to it. It's not exactly those cookies, but those kind of those shortbread, but not the buttery shortbread. So whatever those kind of, I think they're called butter cookies. They're like Danish butter cookies, perhaps. It really gives a bit of that to it because there's a bit of a butteriness to this, but not in a overly buttery way that I wouldn't like. But it really is that crunchy sugar crystals with those 
a light blend of those spices. It's not as heavy as sort of the spices that you get from, say, a berry waffle cone, where it's like, ooh, those are, they've got some ooey gooeyness going with something in there. These are just the baked and dried crumble of the spices with not a whole lot beyond some sugar, spice, and just a little bit of butter or something to keep it together for the crumble. Maybe a bit of oats as a streusel. So that was sugar and spice. Then, I believe it came back pretty much as a duplicate in the Spring Street Sweet Shop Collection 2014, which is sort of, I think, the Grand Mac Daddy like when people think Bake Shop Gourmand Collection from Bath & Body Works, they either sh do or should think of that as the OG that really was so incredible and such a wide variety of them. I think there were 10 or 12 fragrances. A few didn't go wide at the time. And one of them that I believe didn't go wide in the first launch was Honey Cinnamon Crumb Cake. Now it did go wide when the Spring Street Sweet Shop Collection came out in most fragrances, though not all, in I think 2017 as a comeback for a semi-annual sale. It had almost everything except the Pink Lemonade Pound Cake, which also did not go wide except in a single wick, and that was a really great fragrance. Has not seen the light of day since then, and I don't know why, because it would be so popular with the demographic. Anyway, Honey Cinnamon Crumb Cake had notes of today's special, an irresistible baked treat made with fresh, soft cake, local honey, and a hint of cinnamon. All right, so I'm not giving as much there beyond the name itself, but it really smelled spot on side by side. To me, really was a sugar and spice candle, which I was happy to see that go wide, er, and then finding 2017 go wide with honey cinnamon crumb cake. And when I smell this, though I have not done my side by side because I need to dig them out of storage, and I wanted to get this up, it is 90% that. It does smell kind of light, so I'm a little worried with some of the light scents we've been getting from Bath Metrics surprisingly lately, but this one could be light, so we'll burn it. There is a honey almost aspect to it, but a very light, not a heavy, drippy, cloying honey, just a light honeyness to it with that cinnamon, probably a little bit of allspice, kind of a, a hard cookie or crumble to it. Again, sort of that streusel and that glaze, but not much of the bakery underneath of it. There's not much of a cakey, not a batter, not a, a true deep kind of butteriness baked good. It's more like if you just have a cake with like one of those coffee cakes where it's this thick of the brown sugar spice crumble streusel on top and this much of the cake, which is fine by me. That's kind of what this gives me. And toasted cinnamon sugar, not wrong, but I, th I think it's a nice enough fragrance. They could really market this in a bakery collection and it could be very popular. I imagine like this, it probably won't be super popular. Kind of strange how they throw some scents away in that way. So that's my <laughs> rambling long, you got me on a good day, bad day, I don't know, uh, long haul. Let me know your fun finds, any questions you have, and until next time, take care.